One feature that we saw on the Quest Pro that we've never seen on the Quest 2 or 3 is eye tracking. Now for those unfamiliar, eye tracking is a system that uses infrared light, which our eyes cannot detect, to light up your eyes inside the headset so then a camera or multiple cameras can watch your eyes and see where they are looking. Although this may not sound like the most useful feature, there's lots of different applications from navigating UIs inside of games to headsets actually being able to render better graphics and saving a lot of processing power because it can focus just where your eyes are directly looking on having good graphics. And then when your eyes move to a different spot, it can change where those high intensity graphics are, allowing your peripheral vision to stay less clear. But your eyes don't really detect this as we only see super clear right in the center of our vision and our peripheral vision doesn't see that. There's a common function called foveated rendering and it's done in multiple different ways. Headsets that have eye tracking, it can do it exactly where you're looking. Headsets like the Quest 3 that don't, it may do it in games and you may have noticed where the center of the lens looks the clearest and the outside of it looks less clear. But when you turn your head at an object inside, it becomes clear only when it's in the center of your vision. It's the same concept and it's saving the same graphical power, but it's far more noticeable. This is called static foveated rendering versus dynamic, which dynamic pairs with eye tracking and where your eyes are actually looking. It's reasons that headsets like the PSVR 2, the Apple Vision Pro, or the Quest Pro can look way better than even their processors should be able to handle. There is a new eye tracking add-on coming for Quest 2 and 3, the Inzai Lumi, and typically eye tracking is very expensive. It adds weight to a headset, adds more cameras, more power consumption. The Inzai Lumi is looking to change all that by adding a cameraless eye tracking add-on for the Quest 2 and 3 at only $160. Now what's wild about their approach is it's really different. It still has infrared illuminators to illuminate your eyes, but it doesn't use cameras. It uses an array of six much less expensive photo sensors that are measuring the intensity of the reflection of that infrared light off of your eye. So instead of watching your exact eyeball to see where your pupil is going, it's just watching the reflections that are coming back off your eye from the infrared light. And then because each part of your eye is reflecting infrared light with a different intensity, it can tell the exact position of your pupil. This is a revolutionary approach for many reasons. One, they're saying it uses five times less battery than camera-based eye tracking, which is especially important on a headset like a Quest that relies on its wireless battery. It can run easily at a thousand hertz, much, much faster than the typical 120 hertz or even less that you see in normal camera-based eye tracking. With that low latency, it means that it can keep up even faster with where your eyes are looking, meaning they could actually render perfect graphics right where you're looking in a smaller zone and keep up faster to where you still wouldn't catch on and notice that it's happening, thus saving more graphical power. These are all the kind of revolutions we need to get VR further and further along, get those closer to photorealistic graphics. Something about eye tracking that a lot of people aren't aware of is that our eyes are notoriously hard to track for many reasons. Obviously, cameras were slower than your eyes can move, but our eyes are also more fluid than they are solid. So if a camera's trying to track your pupil and you assume your pupil's always perfectly round, it's not. When you move your eyes quickly, you dart from side to side, fluid in your eye can move and your pupil shape can actually change. So something that's based not off camera, higher hertz, tracking it this way could potentially be much more accurate. And even with the current technology, when you have really good eye tracking with foveated rendering, it is so hard inside the headset to see that it's actually happening. I remember on the PSVR 2 when Linus Tech Tips was testing it, he didn't believe it was working because he couldn't catch it with his eyes. But from the outside, when people are watching the social screen, it's so obvious where you're looking because that area looks really clear and the rest of the TV looks so blurry. Yeah, it's so obvious on this display where you are looking. Where am I looking? Uh, at the triangly chummy on the right side of the screen. Shut up! <laughs> now this is an add-on. They didn't give us an exact timeline on it, but more exciting is the possibility that maybe Meta sees this and decides to work with them to incorporate something like this into their next headset. Because having inexpensive eye tracking that's fast, that doesn't consume a lot of battery power, would be the next step to make the graphics even better and make it easier for the developers to implement them without having to rely on everybody buying an extra accessory just for this. There's other uses, of course. Your avatar can actually track your eyes and then translate that inside of social apps too. But ultimately, it's exciting to see something like this coming for this price. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down for it. Again, we don't know when it's coming, but they are saying if you place a $1 refundable deposit, you can get it for a discounted price of just $100. I personally went ahead and put the dollar down myself to try and get this at a discounted price so we can hopefully get it early and share with you some information once we get it. It is a little weird if you do decide to go get it. You go to the site and it looks like you're just signing up for updates and putting your email address, but then after you do that, it allows you to then go and reserve it for 
for a dollar if you want to. I'll keep you posted on this technology though, because it's really exciting and I'm interested to see how this comes to play. Obviously there could be some complications if you're someone who's using prescription lenses already or lens covers, things that could get in the way of these. But let me know in the comments your thoughts and if you're gonna go reserve one yourself. We got some exciting news and a picture sent over. The last person who won a Quest 3 from our channel just a few weeks ago has already received it over in the UK. Another congratulations to Andy. And although they said they already had a Quest 3, they were excited that they won. They're actually gonna pass this off to a friend and help spread the world of VR further, which was super cool to me. That's why they didn't want to send an unboxing. They want to keep it fully boxed and give it to someone brand new in box. I thought that was really awesome. I wanted to share that all with you. Of course, we've already started another Quest 3 giveaway. We've got a Quest 2 one and a Bobo VR one going on too. So if you haven't gotten entered, there'll be links down below in the comments and description for those giveaways. But it's really cool when people want to share something back with us so that we can share it with all of you about how they got it or what they're going to do with it. I just love that. It seems like about 50% of people who have won something from us have been willing to send back either a video or a photo at least of it. So that's really cool. So thank you to all of you out there. It's because of all of you, we get to keep doing these giveaways and make sure you get entered if you haven't. Quest owners might be seeing a slew of new lifestyle apps being developed for the Quest as a new meta accelerator is actually aiming to fund Quest developers who want to design these type of apps. Now, when I hear the word lifestyle, I kind of personally cringe. I just think of people talking about lifestyle brands, but they're talking here about different things, whether it's fashion, home design, shopping, cooking, arts. And an example that they bring up even is Piano Vision, which is an app a lot of people have reported great success as to learning to play the piano. You pair it up with a keyboard at home and then it helps you see through mixed reality what notes are coming, where to play them and helps train you that way. It's something personally actually I've wanted to use for a long time as I have a keyboard and I haven't had any sort of piano training in many, many years. But this is not something that's unfamiliar to the world of Quest. Meta actually funds and helps a lot of developers develop apps. We've had developers on our podcast before from the Pirate Queen to Luna who said that Meta helped fund their app and helped them develop it. They want to focus this in these new lifestyle apps in different areas. I could see where fashion could be used in mixed reality. You know, you can even be seeing different clothes be overlaid over your current clothing. But I think the ones that are interesting to me, definitely home design. We've gone around and been able to measure things inside of our home before with apps that let you do that. Seeing different ideas of how to decorate your home or what kind of furniture would fit in your home with mixed reality is a cool idea. Cooking is a neat one that they bring up. Although personally, the mixed reality does look a lot better than it used to on the Quest 3 and there's less distortion now that they've worked on that. But I still wouldn't recommend using a knife at high speed. But being able to see a recipe being cooked or having it walk you through it is a pretty neat idea. And then art, we actually talked about one recently where it would like transpose an image over almost like you were tracing and then you're using mixed reality to draw on those lines. If you are a developer or someone who's interested in looking into it, I'll leave some links down below because submissions are actually open if you want to try and do this and gain funding from Meta to actually create the project you've been looking to do. I love seeing different uses of VR outside of gaming. I love spending time in gaming, but there is a lot, especially with mixed reality that we'll probably see in the coming years. But let me know out there, what are you using your quest for that's not gaming? We'll probably talk about that later this week. Actually, we got a report of some of the top things people are doing in VR, spending the most time in, and that includes games, but some of them aren't games at all, which really shocked me. Speaking of uses for mixed reality, one of the things we originally saw in the first ads, even back at Connect about the Quest 3, was augments. The idea that you could walk around your mixed reality home and you could have a Spotify player hooked up on the wall that was always there. You could walk over and press play. Photos of your dog could be on another wall, and they'd always stay there in mixed reality. Well, that was something that seemed like it was going to launch right away with the Quest, although now, eight months later, a CTO Boz at Meta has told us why it's still not here and how it needs some more time to cook. Boz goes on basically explaining that they have been testing these and working on them, but they said that they decided it wasn't good enough yet. They wanted it to be a realistic feeling experience with something in the room that felt like a real object, and they said it was more like a toy, saying that the problem that happened with all this is they basically had to restart the whole process of building these and go back to the drawing board. Definitely sounds like corporate speak for like, this thing could not be coming. It would be coming in a long time. It could be something where they need a more powerful chipset in the headset. Is it something you're spending enough time in mixed reality you think you'd really use these often? I think for me personally, it would be more useful to be able to be using them inside of other apps while I'm in. I don't spend a lot of time walking around in mixed reality in my quest. Although on occasion I do, and who knows, maybe the right augments would make this more helpful, but I'm definitely personally not holding my breath on this coming anytime soon with the way he phrased 
raised all of that. Palmer Lucky, one of the original names over at Oculus, teased us all saying that there is a new headset coming from him, and he teased that he was going to reveal more at AWE, the Augmented World Expo, which is basically a VR XR convention that just took place in Long Beach, California. And he did say that this one is more of a military rather than a consumer headset. He gave very little information, although he had teased he was going to give more information at AWE, but basically he said that this is being driven by military requirements, but also going to be used for non-military stuff. It's really cool, it's really something, end quote. Obviously, military application is extremely lucrative and can make for a very successful venture in this space, as we saw when the military was excited about the HoloLens from Microsoft, although that excitement didn't last forever. It's not surprising with the work he's been doing outside the consumer space that that's what happened, but obviously all of us who follow the original Oculus development were pretty excited to hear he might be coming back with something. We'll keep you posted on the information here, and if anything comes of this, I'm sure that he is developing something in that area but I know that there's been things that have been brought up before, like fixes for the Oculus Rift original headphones that may have not ever seen the light of day in the end. Not quite all the information from AWE we were hoping for there, but I guess at least it means it's something as consumers we probably don't need to get too excited about anytime soon. And speaking of the big AWE event, one journalist from Upload VR decided to actually take Ray-Ban glasses in the Apple Vision Pro and try to use them to cover the whole AWE convention. If there was ever a convention where it wouldn't look weird to walk around with something like like this, it's definitely AWE. As you can see, they even captured a video here of somebody else with a full rig on that they tout is great augmented reality. Personally, I will say the idea of wearing like an Apple Vision Pro or even a Quest 3 around a big convention like this, I can see you getting some looks even at an XR convention. And I don't think that the footage from a Quest 3 would be good enough in my mind for like reporting or making final videos. Although I do use the Ray-Bans quite a bit when I'm out at things, it's easy to just start a quick video, grab a quick clip, and it's nice because your hand are totally free when you're doing it. It's an interesting read. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to the full article, but it's interesting to see people in the VR space who are actually trying to push and use these headsets in more public cases and for other uses. And it's entertaining, if nothing else. There's more news. There's some stuff that's just kind of breaking about update V67. So we'll have to hit you up later in the week in the next news segment on all of that. But once again, thank you so much for being here with me today and I'll see you in another reality.